heart of your system. All right, guys, don't think if you kick you, and beside me is sitting an absolutely cracking laptop from PC Specialist. This is the Recoil 2. So this is the latest in a long line of laptops we've seen here at KitGuru that use Intel's latest 8th gen mobile processors. Specifically, the Recoil 2 uses the i7-8750H. Alongside that, it also has a GTX 1060 6GB, while there's also 16GB of DDR4 2133MHz memory. And as for storage, there's also a 256GB NVMe SSD, as well as a 1TB hard drive. So in terms of raw spec, that actually makes it very, very similar to the CyberPower Tracer 3 that I actually reviewed in June. But we're going to start with a look at the design of the Recall 2. And the first thing to note is actually there's a fair amount of brushed aluminium used throughout the build. You can see the entire lid is covered with this lovely brushed aluminium, while the inside around the laptop deck area is also covered with brushed aluminium. Not only does this look good, I think it looks really sleek and quite modern, but it also adds some much needed rigidity, especially considering the price of the laptop is £1,149 for this specific spec I have sitting beside me. I think it adds a premium feel which you don't necessarily get from other laptops, especially gaming laptops around this price. It's also good to see that the hinge is strong enough to be able to open the laptop one-handed. Surprisingly though, the metal doesn't actually add too much weight to the laptop. The Recoil 2 measures in at just over 2.1 kilograms, and considering that the chassis thickness is only 19.9 millimeters thick, if we exclude the rubber feet that is, it's actually a surprisingly portable laptop considering the gaming nature of this machine. The sleek appearance also extends to the inside of the laptop and particularly the bezels around the screen. If we look back to the CyberPower Tracer 3, that had rather chunky bezels which made it look slightly outdated. However, the Recoil 2 has particularly thin bezels which not only reduces the overall footprint of the machine but also makes it look nice and sleek. For instance, I measured the side bezels of the Recoil 2 to be around 5mm in depth while the top bezel is slightly thicker given it has the webcam and that's around 9mm. All in all, it just really helps the Recoil 2 look like a really modern and sleek laptop. The panel itself is a Full HD 1920x1080 display and while PC specialists didn't actually tell us the exact panel technology they've used, it is one of those IPS level jobbies. However, it does give very good contrast, I really enjoyed using it, it's got a good range of brightness as well and colours look nice and punchy and vivid. The hardcore gamers among you would probably be more concerned by the fact it's only a 60Hz display. However, I know that some people are perfectly happy with gaming at 60Hz and it is one of the primary reasons that this laptop costs £1,149. If we look at the MSI GS65 for instance, which has more or less the same core spec as this laptop, but it does have that 144Hz display, that laptop is priced at £1,900, so you can clearly see there's a great disparity in pricing between the Recoil 2 and something a bit more premium like the GS65. Elsewhere, it's also worth touching on the keyboard. This is a mechanical keyboard, and funnily enough, it's actually the exact same one found on the CyberPower Tracer 3. Clearly, both companies decided to use the same third-party OEM for the mechanical keyboard. However, that is no bad thing, as I really like the mechanical keyboard on the Tracer 3. It's got a really nice, clicky, satisfying action. It gives you that audible click as well, which I personally love. So it feels really good for both typing and gaming. The control software is exactly the same as with the CyberPower, so it's not that great. However, the backlight brightness is pretty good, so you get a really clear indication of the RGB lighting, and my personal favourite was the wave effect. You may also be able to tell that my keyboard is actually the Italian layout. That is just a quirk of PC specialists getting the review unit to me in time to be able to do this review. However, of course, if you buy one here in the UK, you can obviously get the UK layout. Moving on now to the trackpad, this is a well-sized unit, it's not as huge as I would like, I really like the really big trackpads you get on the MacBook Pro for instance, however it is a good size and tracking is very very smooth, I had no problems using multi-finger gestures either, and the clicks are as well surprisingly satisfying, I had a, a great time actually using this trackpad, obviously for gaming I still recommend using a mouse, but if you're just browsing on the web or doing emails, this trackpad will serve you no problems. Getting a look at the internals of the laptop is as 
simple as removing all of the Phillips head screws from the underside of the laptop and then the base just pulls off. The first thing to note here is the Samsung PM961 SSD. This is essentially the OEM version of the 960 Evo, which is good to see as that's a hugely popular drive. And it's also worth noting there is actually a spare M.2 slot beside that, which can take both PCI and SATA SSDs. So if you want to add extra storage down the line, that is a very easy way of doing so. There's also a one terabyte 2.5 inch hard drive there, which is from Seagate. It's only 5400 RPM, so it's nothing special. However, it does represent a potential upgrade path if you want to chuck in another 2.5 inch drive down the line. As for memory, there are two SODIMM slots and both are occupied by eight gigabyte modules of Corsair Value Select DDR4 2133 MHz RAM, while the battery is housed towards the bottom of the laptop and that is only rated at 46 watt hours. So while we'll get to the battery testing later, we can't expect it to be lasting very long. Before moving on, it is of course worth looking at the IO. So starting on the left hand side of the laptop, we have one USB 2.0. There's also two headset jacks as well as a full size ethernet. Moving over to the right hand side, we have two USB 3.1 ports. Those are full size type A as well as an SD card reader. And then moving over to the back of the laptop, we can see there's two mini DisplayPort outputs as well as another full-size HDMI video output. And there's also a USB 3.1 Type-C port, which is next to the power input. Now then, moving on to performance. As we'd expect from the i7 8750H and a GTX 1060 6GB, which it is worth noting is the full fat model, it's not one of the slightly slower Max-Q models. From those components, performance is pretty much what we'd expect for 1080p gaming. That means the Recoil 2 does very well in our synthetic benchmarks like 3D Mark Firestrike, and in games it actually proves to be around 1 or 2 FPS faster than the CyberPower Tracer 3. The reason for that is actually the GTX 1060 was boosting to a slightly higher frequency. It was around the 1570 to 1580 MHz range after prolonged usage in games. The CyberPower Tracer 3 was probably around 10 to 20 MHz slower, although the figures do fluctuate slightly. In any case, the performance from the Recoil 2 is perfectly suited to the 1080p 60Hz display, and you can clearly see the laptop had no problem driving the latest AAA titles. It's also worth touching on the thermal performance of the Recoil 2, and this is actually a really really impressive area of the laptop. This is mostly thanks to the large amount of ventilation used on the underside of the laptop and as we'll get to in a moment the fan speeds are relatively aggressive. Still we saw the CPU peak at just 81 degrees under our IDA64 testing and that was with all cores at 3.1 gigahertz as well. If we look at the GS65 for instance in IDA64 all cores hit 2.8 gigahertz and that was still running a few degrees hotter than the recoil 2. The GPU also peaked at just 73 degrees and that is another terrific result for the Recoil 2's cooling performance. Part of that excellent thermal performance is due to the fans as we mentioned, they were having to spin up a bit faster which thus creates more noise. So if we compare it to the CyberPower Traitor 3, the Recoil 2 is definitely the louder laptop, it is noticeably louder. So if you are gaming in a room, you probably will want to wear a headset but just because the fans do get quite audible. I wouldn't say it's the loudest laptop I've ever heard, that one probably still goes to the Aorus X9DT. However, anyone else in the room is probably gonna get pretty annoyed by the fan noise, so a headset is recommended. As for the battery life, we already mentioned this is a 46 watt hour cell inside the Recoil 2, so we're not expecting any top results, and as you can see, it lasted two hours and nine minutes in our PC Mark 8 benchmark. This is essentially par for the course when it comes to a gaming laptop. It's not the absolutely worst we've ever seen, but then again, it's not really that good either. So if you are taking the Recoil 2 out and about, you will want to take the power brick with you. On the whole though, the PC Specialist Recoil 2 is an absolutely top machine. As mentioned, it is sturdy, good looking and surprisingly portable, while you also get the power of the 8750H 6 score processor and GTX 1060 graphics. The biggest downside for gamers is definitely the 60Hz panel, you don't get anything higher than that. However, at this price, which is £1,149, it does become hard to argue with. In any case, I think the Recoil 2 is a fantastic bargain and you just get an absolutely huge amount of laptop for the money, so I am very, very happy to recommend the PC Specialist Recoil 2. I'm Dominic Fulkit Guru. This has been our review of the Recall 2 from PC Specialist. If you like this review, you can give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to be notified about all of our future videos. And we'd also love to chat with you over on Facebook and Twitter. Until then though, I will see you in the next video.